morning, everyone. Thank God for this opportunity to listen to his word. Do you hear me well? Okay, good. Well, one of the main things we have heard as Christians is that we have to tell others about Christ so they could believe in him as well. We have, we have heard this uh, this morning. But the truth is that most Christians don't do that, or at least not as much as we should. In my experience, though I have shared the gospel with many people, I have felt frustrated with myself more than once for not doing it properly. Sometimes I feel the obstacles so big that I get mute. So I ask myself, what might cost me not to talk about Jesus to others? What are those big obstacles that shoot my mouth? Have you ever thought about this? What are those obstacles for you? What could stop you from speaking about Jesus to your neighbor, friend, your classmate, whoever? Would it be fear of being mocked, laughed at? Could it be that you think it's not your job by the pastor's job to proclaim Christ? I think this is a very important question, and the reason could be many. But here we are, wanting others to believe, worrying because we don't see much growth. However, we don't preach the gospel as we should. So my aim today is that we could see what stopped the Jerusalem believers from proclaiming Christ. What are the true reasons for stop proclaiming the kingdom of God? So, we read already the passage. And the first thing we have here is from chapter 7, verse 54, uh, to chapter 8, verse 3. Those who believe in Christ will suffer persecution. Those who believe in Christ will suffer persecution. And so far in the book of Acts, we have seen how the devil was trying to stop the church in the proclamation of the gospel. He used different uh, methods, such as threats. For example, when, when uh, the priest threatened Peter and John uh, for proclaiming Christ. You remember that story? Uh, internal corruption, when Ananias and Sapphira uh, lied against the Holy Spirit, and internal troubles, internal disputes, when the Greeks were complaining about the treatment their widows were receiving. Satan was trying to stop the spreading of the gospel. But as we have learned, he failed every time. However, the devil tried once more, and now he upgraded his methods. He killed and persecuted the church hardly. How? Well, first of all, Stephen was persecuted and murdered. For doing what? We can ask. Or what's the reason? Well, in chapter 7, verse 51, we have the re one of the reasons. For saying they were resisting the Holy Spirit whose words he was speaking. In verse 52, for saying that they had betrayed and murdered the righteous one. This is Christ. And the last reason in verse 56, because he said that Jesus was now seated at the right hand of God. This was too much for them. So they killed this faithful leader. Then, what could the rest of the church expect? Well, the church in Jerusalem was also persecuted. 
And Luke introduces here someone who, could, who would be very well known to all Christians. Saul. This young man was very offended by the Christian message that Christ is the Lord. So he persecuted the church hardly. Look at verse 3. He says, um, Luke says, Saul was ravaging. He was furious to the point that he thought it was his mission to drag them from their houses and put them in prison. I can imagine him literally dragging women by their hair out of their houses. And no matter whether man or woman, he decided to punish them and stop them for proclaiming Christ. Just for that, for believing and proclaiming Christ. And this is not a weird case. There are more people like Saul who don't like Christianity at all and want to stop us from believing in Christ and from proclaiming his kingdom. So, what about us? Well, we are, and we will be persecuted. Indeed, 2 Timothy 3, 12 says, All who desire to live a godly life in Christ will be persecuted. All who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. And maybe we will not be put in jail here in Britain, but we will be rejected. We will lose our jobs, maybe. The other day, Keith was talking about a couple of comedians who work for the BBC. Then they, they converted to Christ, and what happened? They lose their jobs. Maybe we will be accused of being intolerant by the LGTB community, or by those who want to delude the gospel, or in other words, those who don't want to speak about sin or repentance, those who want to make the cross easy to carry, those who want us to be more friendly with heresy and error. Understand that there will be a lot of people who will try to stop us from saying Jesus is the Lord. But I have a question for us. If like 2 Timothy 3.12 says, those who want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus and proclaim him to others will be persecuted, how is that many of us are not suffering persecution? We are fine. Why are not we are aren't we suffering persecution? Well, I think we must ask ourselves. Is it because we are not sharing Christ with others? Is it because we value our comfort over Christ's glory and we so aren't willing to stand out from the crowd? Is it because we are preaching a different Christ, all loving and not, and not judgment, judgment? Is it because we are trying to please people instead of pleasing God? We are trying to be so nice with people. If you are a Christian, you will be persecuted for believing in Christ because by nature, men oppose Christ and don't want the gospel to be spread. We will be persecuted. Then, we can think, well, this time, the devil made believers stop proclaiming Christ. Do you think? The devil win this time? Well, the answer is no. They didn't stop proclaiming Christ. 
these disciples in the early church, they didn't stop proclaiming Christ. And this leads us to the second part of our passage from um, verse 4 to, thir to 13. Those who believe in Christ proclaim him even through persecution. Those who believe in Christ proclaim him even through persecution. These Jerusalem believers took the gospel with them to Judea and Samaria. This is what verse 4 says. Now those who were scattered went about preaching the word. The word of God. And we can ask, who were these believers? Well, if you look at uh, verse, um, chapter 8, verse 1, it says, And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Did you catch that? Except the apostles. So the apostles were in Jerusalem, and this, the, the rest of the church were, was scattered. So who went about preaching the word? Normal Christians like you and me. Ordinary Christians, ordinary believers. The big guys were in Jerusalem, so they carry on with the proclamation of the word. Brothers and sisters, to proclaim Christ, to proclaim his word is not only the pastor's or leader's job. It's the job of all of us. These Jerusalem believers understood that, and they lived day by day doing so. Have we understood that? Do we believe in that? Do we do that day by day? And you must be thinking, well, Rainier, they proclaiming the word of God, okay? But the whole Bible is the word of God. So what part specifically should I teach? Well, in verse 5, we have Philip as an example of, the, of one of those believers. And he went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. What did he proclaim? Simple message. Jesus is the Christ, the one God has sent to redeem us from our sins and take us back to God. Simple message. In verse 12, we have more details. It says, Philip proclaims the kingdom of God and the name of Christ. In other words, God is the king over the whole universe and his kingdom is coming to destroy the earthly kingdom of sin, the kingdom of the devil. And those who desert the kingdom of the devil can come to the kingdom of God and be saved through believing in Jesus, the king of God's kingdom. Simple message. The kingdom of God and Christ. This was also the message of the apostles. I don't know if you can remember uh, some Sundays ago, um, we, we look at uh, chapter 2, verse 36, when the apostle Peter said, let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. And in chapter 4, verse 12, we have, And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. There is salvation in no one else apart from Christ. What a great news. Friends who are here today, did you know this? 
Did you know that Jesus is the only one who can save you from your sins? And the Bible says about uh, this, that Philip, by proclaiming this message, he saw great success, success in the proclamation of the gospel. Many Samaritans believe in Christ. Even Simon, the most uh, famous magician of the zone, he believed as well. In verse 8, we have... Um, Mm, this uh, detail that Luke tells us that there was much joy in that city because of the good news. You want, you want to see much joy in Bedford? Well, this is what was happening there. Joy because of the gospel. And some days ago, Dinesh, one of the Cornhead students, um, he told me a similar story. Um, he went to a town in Nepal where he lives and um, they were celebrating a wedding and there there was this uh, uh, sorcerer, this famous sorcerer um, and they preached the gospel to him and this man um, became a Christian and this man was so famous in, 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 in that town yeah, and, and around that many people from different parts of the country uh, came to request his services. But this man became a Christian. Um, and he passed from being an ambassador, an ambassador of the devil and the darkness to be an ambassador of Christ uh, and his kingdom. He was now representing Christ and speaking his words to others. And my friend Dinesh told me the same Luke told us about the Samaritans. There was much joy because of that in that town. Do you see how the Lord works through us when we proclaim that Jesus is God and Savior? We must imitate these Jerusalem believers and speak about Jesus wherever we go. Remember, they were persecuted for believing in Christ, but they continue to speak about Him everywhere. In the, in the hardest circumstance, they didn't stop proclaiming Christ. So, if we are honest, we, we can say that we don't proclaim Christ as much as we should. So, why is that? Is it because we don't value Christ as much as we should? We don't appreciate Him? Is it because we don't know the gospel ourselves to proclaim? And this could be a they're one of the uh, reasons. Is it because we are afraid we won't be able to answer these questions? Well, let's pray then for boldness. Um, let's, let's, let's try to do something and, and, and learn a tried an outline of the gospel. Let's do something. Please come to us, to the leaders, and, and we will love to help you to pray, to encourage you to talk about. Come to us. Come to other brother, other sister, and, and say, come with me and, and let's share the gospel with this or that person. Let's do something about it. I have a, a question for you. How do we call a woman who works... Uh, in helping doctors in the hospital. A nurse, right? But if that woman goes to the Middle East and, and start working there, how do we call her? Well, a missionary nurse. 
But why do we make that difference? Why don't we see that woman as a missionary here in Bedford, in the hospital she works? Why does she see herself like that? Why don't we see ourselves, teachers, lawyers, photographers, musicians, mom, dad, grandpa, graphic designers, IT guy, the girl in the sound, in the job you work. Why don't we see ourselves as missionaries in our place? We are missionaries in our place. Our mission is here and now. It's not, the Middle East is not the only field for the proclamation of the gospel. Here and now, like these Jerusalem believers. Think of, the per think of one person this week you can share Jesus with. Right now, think on that. Ask if they would like to read the Bible with you. Start with something simple. Invite our neighbor for a cup of tea and chat about Jesus. What about people in our sport clubs? Parents who have a child in the same school you have your children. People outside are lost without Christ. We must tell them. We need courage and faith to tell them. I know, it's not easy. It's um, sometimes scary. But that's what the devil wants you to think. That's what he wants you to feel. So he can stop you. Jesus is Lord, and we can't stop proclaiming Him. And uh, this is a funny story. The, the first song I learned here, I learned when I came to England, was a uh, song uh, Gareth Family uh, sing uh, after, before uh, they eat. And the song says, He is Lord. Gareth, help me with that. <laughs> He is Lord, He is Lord. He has risen from the dead, He is Lord. And that's true. That's a, a great truth to sing. Jesus is Lord. So if He is Lord, we must proclaim Him. But well, if He is not Lord, don't bother yourself believing and proclaiming Him. But if you believe He is Lord, as the Bible says, as God has testified, let's share Him with others. Brothers and sisters, what stopped the Jerusalem believers to proclaim Christ? Sorry? Nothing. Nothing. Even prison, even death, even having to flee to other areas, nothing stopped them to believe in Christ. So, friends who are here today and don't know Christ. I want to say to you the same thing Jerusalem believers said to the Samaritans. Christ is Lord and Savior. And God wants you to believe in Him. Believe in Him and repent from all your sins. Recognize you have offended God by doing what He hates. And I can assure you, if you do that today, He will forgive you and receive you. <coughs> For those believers here today who are sharing Christ with others, well done. Keep doing that. That's the will of God. <coughs> I need water. <coughs> I 
also would like those who understand <coughs> sorry <coughs> I also would like those who understand that um, they are ambassadors of Christ to come here and take this piece of paper that reminds them of who they are. Oh, sorry. If there's someone here who understands that he's an ambassador of Christ, oh. are you an ambassador of Christ? Please come here then. Don't be shy. Okay. Good. Just one. A Cuban guy. Cuban girl. Good. Well, um, I know you know that. It's just you are being shy. But I have good news for all of us. We are ambassadors of Christ. No matter if you stand or not, you are an ambassador of Christ. You must proclaim him wherever you go. We must take the proclamation of the gospel seriously. If Jesus is Lord and Savior, we must proclaim him to everybody wherever we are. We must understand that nothing can stop the spreading of the gospel. God is making in this world but we also must understand that He has chosen us to do that. He works through us, through you and me. What a privilege we have. So, let's do our job. Let's proclaim Christ to others. I will finish with this. Through this history, we learn that God is working powerfully to spread His gospel through His church, and there is nothing, not even persecution or death, that could stop us from proclaiming that Jesus Christ is the only Lord and the only Savior of man. God bless you.